everyone. This is Mark Claiborne, um, the CEO of Self Credit Repair Learning Center, and welcome to my new series. It's called an interview series, and every week I'm going to try to interview another expert, whether it's in credit repair, debt settlement, marketing, uh, anything pertaining to uh, uh, running a credit repair business or settling your debts with pennies on a dollar, or it could just be marketing, uh, marketing in general. And today uh, I have a very special guest uh, on our show today, our interview series. And her name is Miss uh, Phillips. She could tell you her first name because sometimes I get it wrong, and I don't want her to beat me up over the phone. So uh, we're going to get right into this interview today. Today we're going to talk to Miss Phillips. Uh, she has a very popular book on Amazon, and she's going to talk about that book on debt settlement and collection agencies. And today we're going to talk about uh, debt settlement. And again, like I said, um, we're going to get right into it, and we're, we're going to deliver for the next 30 minutes on some great content. Ms. Phillips, how are you doing today? I'm doing so great, Mark. Thanks for having me on your show. Okay, good. Listen, tell me about, well, first of all, can you just tell me the name of your book and where and where can people pick up your book? The name of my book is Jumpstart uh, Your Credit, How to Negotiate and Settle Your Debts in 10 Steps. And 10 steps. Can you really sell your desk in 10 steps? <laughs> yes, you can, actually. Um, this this book was actually based on my experience and what I was actually uh, dealing with, with uh, debt collectors. Uh, so my, my book really focuses on how to settle your debts um, with debt collectors, and I also talk about what you can do uh, before you get to that um, stage of dealing with debt collectors. Very, very good. Now, you know, I get, uh, because I run Self Credit Repair Learning Center, and Self Credit Repair Learning Center just caters towards consumers with credit problems who need help in credit repair, and even who's trying to start and run their own credit repair company. So here's some of the questions that I get. We're going to talk about debt settlement, because debt settlement uh, coincides with credit repair, and we're going to talk about how consumers can settle their debt. So uh, let me ask you a couple questions about uh, um the 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 federal statutes of limitations on how long derogatory information can stay on a person's credit report. Now, some of the questions that I get is this: Hey, Mark, um, if a item is about to fall off my credit report, let's let's just say in five years, mm-hmm. should I waste my money trying to settle that debt, or should I just uh, just do nothing and let it fall off? So, should they be concerned about the federal statute of limitations on how long a debt should be uh, should stay on a credit report and whether they should settle or not? That is a good question. It's actually power packed, so I'll try to break it up based on the different um, ways that you asked the question. Now, like you mentioned, there's a time period, there's a statute of limitations that you do have to take into account. Um, I actually... Um, you know, reference this in the book, that majority of people's bad uh, debt, um, it's usually from defaulted uh, um, debts, which are debts that have been charged off and are now in the hands of a collection agency. So when the individual asks, hey, Mark, it's been five years, um, you know, the, the clock is ticking, should I go and settle that debt? And the first thing that I say is, number one, who has the debt? Because I believe, and I wrote about this in the book, that debts are broken up into three pieces, which is your current debts that are debts that are current up to 30 days, then you have your past due debts. That are those are debts that are between 60 and 90 days, and then you have your defaulted debts, and those are debts that are past the 120 day mark. The credit card company has now said, you know what, um, we don't think we're going to collect on this. We've wrote it off as bad debt. So that individual who is saying, should I settle? Find out where these debts are. Nine times out of ten. That individual who's asking that question, they are wondering should they contact the debt collector and say, hey, I want to work something out. And that is when a whole different strategy has to come in play because if you're already at the five-year mark, statute of limitations, say seven years, then you, of course, you have to take the statute of limitations of the state you're in. With all that being said, you know me, Mark, I'm a very big advocate of validating the debt. Before you even get to that part to say, hey, Mr. Debt Collector or Miss Debt Collector, I want to settle with you, I'm going to say validate the debt. 
So to answer the question, should it be settled, there's some steps that has to be done beforehand. But like I said, when I talked about the different types of debts, 80 to 90 percent of the people are going that ask that question are really at the defaulted debt stage. And so the first thing I say before you even contact that de- uh, debt collector is to do, I mean, yeah, debt collector is to do a debt validation because the worst thing that you want to do is call, do what I call awake, awakening the giant. And what that means is that, yeah, you're at the five year mark now, but if this is a debt that may be dormant debt collectors not worrying about it, the clock starts to start ticking. So now you're no longer at the five years, it starts at day one. So if you decide to say, if you don't know anything about what I've told you and you just go ahead and contact that debt collector, legally that debt collector now, although you've paid and you worked something out, they can legally report it seven more years after that five-year mark. Wow, that's interesting. So uh, we'll come back to debt validation uh, in a few minutes. So let me ask you this, Dan. What debts can be settled? Is there some debts that can't be settled, some debts that can be settled? And that that is a good question. I personally believe that debts that should be settled are debts that, of course, that are past due. They are at the 60- and 90-day period. Of course, you're not going to settle 30-day debts because you're current. Those are current debts. You're paying on time. Um, you know, the credit card companies like you, you like the credit card companies because you can pay. But when you get into that 60- and 90-day period, there seems to be a struggle right there. And so there's something financially going on that, you know, you can't pay. So now with so much credit um credit card reform along with you know um uh, you know a lot of people are in financial distress a lot of um if if this is a credit card once again i you know and i apologize i didn't talk about that um right now i'm talking about unsecured debt so let me just tell your audience unsecured debts are, are debts that are not secured by anything a secured debt would be a home would be a a um uh, would be a um, a car. Of course, if you get past due on those things, they'll take it from you. So they're secured by something. Unsecured debts are debts that are not secured by anything. You know, credit cards, medical uh, medical debts. Um, it, you know, um, so those are some examples. So going back to what I was saying, with so much you know reform that is going on. Um, when you're at that 60 or 90 day mark and you have not gotten charged off by the credit card company, that is a good time to contact the credit card company and work something out. And many of them have different types of programs that you may not know of. They may have a fresh start program. Um, they may have a financial, you know, get yourself back on track program. The, the thing that the consumer wants to do is to call because a lot of times some credit card companies will send you a letter and say, you know, we know you're past due, but this is what we'll do. If you make these three payments, this can put your account back on good standing. Um, they may even say that if you, you know, um, if you do, you know, go through this program, um, we will not, you know, charge off the credit card. So that is a form of settlement um, because you're avoiding getting to the defaulted stage. And, it, and if you financially can uh, work something out with any type of program that a credit card company may have, then it's a good chance to uh, work it out. Um, the same way with medical accounts. As long as they are not at the stage where the, um, the doctor or the hospital has written them off, work something out. Let them know your financial situation, um, whereas, um, you know, you can – get back on track with the debts. Now, something that you didn't talk about, and you, I, you may bring it up later on, but I'll just just brush on it right now, um, is those credit counseling agencies that say we will settle your debts for you. Um, so that's something you may want to watch out for because it can impact your credit. Along with these how, programs. How is that? Hold that. How, how is it? How would that impact your, your credit? Because it's how it's reported um, at the point that um, you decide to take them, uh, take the the counseling route, um, and they start reaching out to your um, to the collection agencies 
I mean, to the debt collectors and the credit card reporting agencies, it's how it's reported. And reporting means a lot of things on your credit report. And then what happens is is that you're going to have that reporting on your credit report for a certain period of time. And if you do get out of this, you know, hardship, uh, the first thing that new uh, creditors are going to look at um, that you had to get a, a counselor, a credit counselor, to help you with your debts. So it can have some, um, it can have a bad impact. Um, I know some people who have got credit, went to a credit counseling agency and um, they it has worked out for them. Others, which people may want to look out for, is the fees that are tagged on to it. Um, I always tell people there's no such thing as free lunch. Um, so there you go. I mean, there is a fee along with it. So don't get yourself so <laughs> tied up in a knot that you can't even afford um, to pay them. Um, because at the end of the day, that's all they're doing is kind of calling the uh, companies for you and restructuring things. And that's why information like what you're doing, Mark, um, is good because it informs the consumers, whereas they can kind of do a lot of the late work themselves. Okay, good, good. So, so let's touch on some of the questions that I receive, you know, from some of uh, my book buyers myself. And uh, let's go with one. We're going to come back to debt validation in a few minutes, and we're going to get to that because we're going to talk about that in, 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 in detail. But what happens uh, when the account is charged off? It's charged off. The the creditor just throws their hands up, and they sell they sell it off to a collection agency. The collection agency now has the debt, and the collection agency is sending the customer letters, uh, as, you know. Offering them settlements of twenty or thirty percent on the dollar, but yet they're still reporting uh, the derogatory item on the customer's credit report. So, uh, what should they do? So, who's still reporting? Is it the original creditor or uh, uh, or the, the is collector? It the well, the collector bought it from the creditor, okay. and the collector now owns it. It's not assigned to the collector. They now own it, and they've reported it to the credit bureau. But your customer is trying to restore their credit. They're trying to raise their credit score. They're trying to buy a home or something. But the collector is now sending this, these letters, these dunning letters, offering settlements. But as you know, if you pay off a settlement, that's not going to improve your score. Yeah. It's still derogatory. So yeah, at that point, right. what should the customer do? Should they go with the debt validation letter first? Or should they offer us? Should they take the settlement and just get a, a paid, paid in full letter, or should they ask for pay for deletion? What, what's your strategy on that? Uh, my strategy is always start with debt um, validation. Um, pay for deletes are very hard to get, um, and if you are fortunate enough to get them, you definitely want to have everything in writing. Because what a lot of people don't realize is that that information does not disappear. Those debt collectors are in the business of collecting money. So what that means is that they'll tell you anything to get your money. Oh, sure, we'll contact the, the, the collect credit um, reporting agencies, and we'll do this and we'll do that. Um, so if, if you do um, and you're able to get a pay for delete, is to get everything in writing. So you can just go to the reporting agencies yourself and have the trade line removed. But, Mark, you know, my strategy is always to start with debt validation because legally um, someone who is assigned a debt is legally supposed to tell you um, if they really do own the debt um, because what a lot of consumers don't know is those debts are sold. So you can pay um, ABC Collection Agency and they'll resell the debt. And like I said, you know, I want to let your audience know is that this has happened to me um, this has happened to me in real life. This is nothing that I'm kind of rehashing from information. This happened to me. Um, I just want to share this one little story. I won't be too long-winded, but um, it, during the time of 98, 99, when I was on this crusade of I wanted to repair my credit, I did those things, you know. Um, I, I got my credit report. I saw that 90, 80 to 90 percent of my credit report was still collection agencies. What did I do? I called them. I worked something out. I paid them because I had the money, um, and, and I felt proud, and I didn't know anything about, you know, pay for delete, um, all, you know, only thing they told me was that we'll put on there, you know, settled, you know, pay as settled as agreed or whatever, it did nothing to my credit score, nothing. I was so embarrassed because I did, I thought I did something that six months to a year later, um, 
you know, I walked all proud thinking I was going to get a brand new car, and lo and behold, I went to the car dealership and couldn't get approved for anything. And when they told me what my score was, I was floored. Um, and, and, you know, and, and, and just to tell your audience to show how, you know, prideful I was, was that I went to these dealerships with all the stuff that I did. Like, I, I'm showing them, like, look, I wrote these letters, and this was the letter I got back from them, and it meant nothing because my score said something different. So that is why I want to let the audience know is that just because you have some money and you want to pay them and they take your money does not mean your score is going to change. Um, you have to get the whole trade line deleted, and debt validation allows you to do that because if they cannot legally show you that they own the debt, um, according to the FCRA, the Federal Credit Reporting Act, the credit reporting agencies have to remove it. They cannot keep reporting something, and, and it's been proven because you've shown them the steps that you've contacted this company, they are not giving you anything, and it has to be removed. And that is how a trade line gets removed and your score goes up. Paying people is not going to help. And and I say this cautiously because I don't want people to think that I'm encouraging them to not pay their debts. Because this is what I tell people. If you feel like in your heart of hearts, because I understand there's some old school people out there, they feel like whatever they sign their John Hancock's on, they're going to pay it. And so for those people who just feel like I just have to pay this debt, then by all means pay it. But don't think your score is going to go up. So, you know, so it, it depends on what side of the fence do people want to be on. Do you want to be on the I pay my debts off side or do you want to be on my credit um, score got increased side? I prefer the credit score <laughs> got increased because I'm going to tell you this, when you go for um, something that requires your credit, they are not going to care anything about you paid off some debt collectors. So I know I said a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but you're absolutely right. And so I, I want to go back to uh, I want to cover a few things here. Uh, uh, let's talk about debt validation. What is debt validation? Is that a letter that you write to them? Uh, do you recommend that they call the, uh, the the collector up, or uh, can you take me through that? Okay, I uh, don't recommend anything um, with calls. I recommend everything is in writing because you have um, you have some proof. So I would always start with a letter um, because once you go back to the credit reporting agencies to say that um, you're going to use that as a defense to have things removed, you want to have paper. Telephone conversation is not going to help you. Um, all it's going to do is make your ego feel good and, you know, and you get the chance to talk to someone who may have more knowledge than you and they're going to start saying things that scaring you and then you're going to feel like, oh, my God, i got to pay them. Um, so I always tell people, do not um, call debt collectors unless you really have knowledge of the law because they have been groomed to scare you, and that's what they're in the business of doing. If they can call your home and scare you, what do you think they're going to do when you call them? <laughs> they're going to scare you. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And I always tell, I always say uh, to consumers, as soon as a debt collector call you from the very moment that you know it's a debt collector, you have to take control of the conversation mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, they will take control of the conversation, and in return, they'll either force you to say something that you don't want mm -hmm. to say mm -hmm. or either force you to hang up because you don't know how to handle their tone exactly. and their digging for information. Exactly. So, um, exactly. okay, so, so you, you recommend writing a letter asking the debt collector to validate the debt. Is that what you recommend? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, okay, so now the, the, debt, the debt collector, they, the consumer sent the letter, the debt collector validated the debt. They were able to produce the documents that this consumer, in fact, owns this debt, and they're now saying, well, we know that you own this debt. You owe it to us. We're going to offer you a settlement for 50% on the dollar. Should they take that settlement? Well, you know what, Mark? It's so interesting about when you said they're going to send you something, because this is what I want your audience to understand. Um, be very clear 
and with what they're sending you, because this is what debt collectors will send you. They will send you their computer-generated documents saying, Joe Johnson, you owe $2,500, and say, okay, we validate it, and that is not what they're supposed to send you. Just, you know, I have a long letter form that I give people, but some of the key items that they want to give you is they have to send you the original contract that you signed when um, you got into that debt. Um, they're also supposed to send you um, a, an, um, a ledger history of any payments that you made. So that's just two of the items. And I'll be honest with you, Mark, um, it has been very rare um, that I have seen it. I've seen credit um, debt collectors send something that they want consumers to believe um, is a validation. Um, so you have to be very clear. I know my long-form letter, I literally List out all the things that a debt collector is supposed to include. And nine times out of ten, it's never there. Um, so, you know, just. And where can you get this letter from? Um, you can actually get it from my website, jumpstartyourcreditbook.com. And if you go under the resources tab, Okay, and so okay, so you have this letter in there. They send it to the collector, and say for example, you know, just all right. So the collector sends them some information, but they're still offering a settlement. And the reason why I'm saying this to you is because some people are in a situation where they're trying to get a home, right? Mm -hmm. And the loan officer said, "Listen, you have to, you have these outstanding collection accounts. You have to resolve this matter before we can underwrite your loan for you." Yeah, so at yeah. that time, at that time, the customer has a decision to make. Do they settle this debt for 50% of the dollar, right, with no credit score increase, just to get their home, right, to satisfy the loan officer's requirement, or do they pay 100% of the debt to go for pay for deletion, to get it completely deleted, right, to get the score boost? What, what, do, you, what do you recommend? Well, to be honest with you, and I'm glad you asked that question because I was actually faced with that from somebody who asked me. And at that point, the ball is no longer in your court. Um, it's in your court in terms of how bad you want the home. Um, it's now in the court of the mortgage person. And so I would share with them, and this has no strat this has nothing to do with the strategy of what way should you do it. It's really up to what they feel like the underwriter is going to look um, highly on. And so that's all you can do. You can let them know, hey, I got these two options. What option do you think I should go with um, for the underwriting department to give me a, a thumbs up? So at that point, you you have no, you, you really can't do anything. As I said, it's not enough time to go through the motions of debt validation, um, but you really want the home. And so, like I said, the ball is in the mortgage, um, the mortgage rep um, court, and let him tell you what he thinks the um, underwriter is going to do. Um, if you have the punch, um, the um, opportunity to get the pay for deletion. They, they've given you the paperwork. You can give it to the mortgage guy. I would personally go with that because I, I kill, you know, two birds with one stone. I got my deletion, um, and I know automatically it's go, my score is going to get boosted up regardless if I get the mortgage guy's boost or not um, because the credit reporting agencies are going to give me the boost. So personally, me, I would go with the, the, the 100% and, and get, um, you know, um, uh, the pay for deletion. Uh, of course, having everything in writing, nothing verbal over the phone. So here's another thing. Here's another question that I that I received before. Hey, Mark, listen, I'm, I'm trying to settle this debt with this collection agency. The debt, one, I got one debt. One is 3000 one is 5000 I talked to the debt, the debt collector about pay for deletion, and they told me that we don't do pay for deletion. Okay, so how do you me. answer that person's question? And, and you know what? The common response was, like I told you earlier, it's very rare that they're going to do a pay for deletion. I mean, if you really want to push the matter, I mean, you can ask to speak to the supervisor or what have you. But it's really rare to get that from them. It's not a surprise when, when, you know, when I hear it. So that's why I said if, if you have the opportunity to get it, I would make sure it's in writing. It would, it would not, I would not have nobody verbally telling me they're going to do a pay for deletion because, like I said, they're in the business of money, and so they're just trying to get your money. Um, so it is really rare. Um, that's why I know you really can't. That's why I think the debt validation is 
the best thing that could have been created because it gets you around all that, you know, song and dance stuff that you have to do with debt collectors because they're in the business of making money and you're in the business of hopefully getting back financially sane. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so, so tell me about these these monsters. These monsters. What are they call these monsters? They call zombie debts. Exactly. <laughs> tell me about these monsters. What is a zombie debt? A, a, a zombie debt is a debt that's way past the statute of limitations. I mean, it's past the federal statute of limitations and it's past your state um, uh, statute of limitations. But the thing is, is that they still circulate because what people don't realize is that uh, financial ignorance is a billion-dollar industry. So what right. that means is the, the industry of, you know, um, buying debts, selling debts, subprime, um, is a very lucrative industry, and they know that 90% of the people don't know, 80% of the people don't know. And so they will keep, you know, um, and it, those debts may not even be on your credit report because, of course, any debts like those are easy to remove. I mean, clearly the credit report and agency you see is way past delete it. You know, I usually have not ever had a, a problem having those removed. But in terms of the notices still coming to your house, I'll be honest with you, I'm very transparent. There's a debt that I had uh, back in 1991. I was only about 17 years old, so I'm telling my age. <laughs> and it was yeah. from uh, one of those fitness centers called Living Well Lady. And do you know, Mark, to this day, they will still <laughs> send me a letter. Now, clearly, <laughs> Do the math, 1991, 20-something years, <laughs> but it, it still yeah. comes. Mm -hmm. So that's why when, you know, when people, you know, want to get on their holy, uh, you know, uh, grail of saying, I want to pay debts, don't be deceived because those little amounts that they're saying, oh, settle this for $50, and you like, say, no, I'm not going to write a check. Then if you do that now, that clock starts over. So imagine if I went and paid that 20-something-year-old debt. The clock has now started. And legally, they can put it right back on my credit report, insert it with no problem, because I paid it. I've so owned up to the debt. Should, so should they should just leave those zombie debts alone? Leave them alone. I mean, if they're, in the, if they're on their report, by all means, contact the reporting agencies and let them know. But anything coming to your house, just ignore it. Because I'll be honest with you, with me personally, I haven't had anybody to call. The letters may come, but the, the, there's no calls. But if it's on your credit report, oh, please, yeah, have that removed. That's the only thing. Um, they're not on my report. But the letters still come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they still come. And uh, what I always recommend consumers to do is this. If they receive a letter um, and I and I don't recommend this to them through like uh, consultation or anything because I can't provide that type of advice here in California. But through through my books and my education, I always recommend them to as soon as they receive a a collection letter for an attempt to collect a debt from anybody, a collection agency, a law firm, it doesn't even really matter at this moment. I'll always say get the name of that law firm or that collection agency, run a search, go to their Secretary of State website, and run a search, research on the Secretary of State website to find out if a collection agency is required in their state to have some sort of collection license to exactly, collect Exactly, those debt. under the usury laws, yes. R yes right. Those and usury they, laws if, of your state. Mm -hmm. Right, and if they do, in fact, require a license – run that law firm's name or that collection agency's name in that search bar to see if they're active in that state. And if they're not active, if they're not active, then they are violating that state law. And I'm not a lawyer. This is just for information only. That's my mm -hmm. disclaimer. What I'm saying is that if they're not active, then they could be uh, in violation of some sort of law. So what I would do in return is I will simply write a simple letter. I will make a copy I would print out – I would do a screenshot of the state law, right? And I would also print out a copy, a screenshot of the collection agency showing that they're inactive in that state, right? And then I would attach both of those along with a letter stating in big letters, I don't care if you're a law firm or a collection agency, you're not allowed to collect in the state. You are violation, you're violating this code. And if I get another letter from you, again, I will be forwarding this 
to a consumer rights attorney in my state. Now, that method right there, Ali, uh, Ms. Phillips, is extremely powerful. Mm-hmm. And I can I can I can bet you any money, no law firm and no collection agency will ever call you again. They'll just simply sell that debt to another collection agency. What do you think? That's a great strategy, and I, and I love how you broke it down to uh, the listeners because a uh, real life scenario that happened to me. Um, this is actually, um, I guess, a new um, a new strategy that um, some debt collectors are doing. Um, this was a debt that came from Canada, um, and the interesting thing about this debt, uh, Mark, um, was it was a debt collector in Canada um, did the same thing. They had no rights uh, to collect in the state of New Jersey. They were using a um, a Washington D.C. number. So when they called, they would call from a Washington, D.C. number. Um, and so I know your uh, audience may be, t- you know, saying, well, did you do the debt validation? Um, this is what's so savvy. I did do it. Sent it all the way to Canada. Um, cost a little, you know, extra money, but I sent it. Um, but I also let them know that same thing, said it in my own words over the phone. Um, and that was something interesting that I had never saw, um, you know, that, a Canadian company, and I, I want to say they were probably just doing it um, to go through some loopholes, whereas they they may can get away from, um, around that whole debt validation law because really it's a U.S. law. Um, you know, I don't know the laws. I'll be very transparent of Canada, of the, you know, the laws, what debt collectors can do. But I kindly told them what can and cannot be done in the U.S. So I totally agree with that, that strategy. Absolutely. And, Ms. Phil, listen, uh, we're we're wrapping up now. We're at a 30-minute mark. I try to keep these short. I hope all the listeners of this uh, tele-seminar uh, learned something today. And, uh, Ms. Phillips, is there any, anything you want to say lastly that a consumer can go out and do right now if they're, if they, if they're dealing with uh, collection calls or, or if they have a debt settlement uh, letter on their table? Is there something that you can tell them right now as a, as a closing that they can do, they can take with them? Well, one thing that I can tell them is to educate yourself. Like I said, financial ignorance is a billion-dollar industry, not to call your audience ignorant, but you do want to have knowledge of the law. And the way you're going to get knowledge is please pick up my book. You can go to Jumpstart Your Credit Book. Dot com, uh, purchase it there, or you can go right on to Amazon and put Jumpstart Your Credit Book, um, how to set, uh, negotiate and settle your debts in 10 steps. Good, good, good. Thank you for being on the Self-Credit Repair Learning Center interview series. This is Mark Claiborne, uh, the host and creator of uh, Self-Credit Repair Learning Center. I hope you enjoyed everything, and I think that's it for today. Everyone, you take care, and good night.